Now we're going to look at a Coulomb's Law conservation of charge problem. Now, in this problem, we are told that we have two identical conducting spheres. Now, for this chapter and until later in the course, when we can understand and be able to calculate the difference between non-identical conducting spheres, which we will be able to do, but we need a little more physics for that. For right now, they will always be identical conducting spheres, and we are told that the first sphere has a charge of negative 10 microcoulombs, and the second sphere has a charge of positive 5 microcoulombs. And when we're talking about conservation of charge, we're always referring to net charge of the system. So that's why I have my little peanutted coupled system here. So the conservation of charge will deal with the entire coupled system. So in that case, the net charge of the system is simply adding and subtracting the charges. So negative 5 microcoulombs, very straightforward. Now, in the conservation of charge problems, you'll always be looking at befores and afters. So prior, in this case, prior to the spheres touching, we are told they are 0.2 meters apart. So Coulomb's Law, K, Q1, Q2, divided by R squared. Notice we're just calculating the value, the magnitude, right? We don't use the positives or negatives. So we get the value is 11.25 newtons. And since they are opposite, opposites, opposites attract, so they are attracting. Now, after the spheres touch or are touched, electrically touched, by putting a wire between them, the notion that they're identical spheres is important to us because we are assuming that they are identical in every way in terms of size, shape, and electrical characteristics, meaning that when they touch, they will equally share the total charge that is available to the system. So in this case, we go back here, the total charge available to the system was our negative 5 microcoulombs. So that negative 5 microcoulombs is now going to be equally shared between the two spheres, and that is why we have the negative 2.5 now on the one sphere, the negative 2.5 on the first sphere. So after touching, they now have identical charge and same sign, both negative. Well, again, we calculate just the magnitude of the charge, the, the K, Q1, Q2, the distance between them remain the same, R squared. Notice now we have much different situation relative to the force. Now, the total charge on the system remained the same, negative 5, negative 5. So we had the negative 2.5 and the negative 2.5, consistent, negative 5 microcoulombs, but look at the difference in the force. We went from a force of 11.25 to a force of 1.4, so almost an order of magnitude smaller, and not only is it much smaller, it's now repelling, not attracting. So be a little careful in thinking that conservation of, what conservation of charge means and what's the same and what has the ability to be different. What's the same is the net charge, and that's really all conservation of charge is giving us. It's important because we will be utilizing it to solve other more difficult problems, as we'll see in our next example. But it does not mean, as we saw here, that the forces have to remain the same or that they even have to uh, remain attracting. In this case, they did not. So, first example was relatively straightforward, and now we'll look at one that is a little more involved.